Kevin Parker is an active shooter security expert, and Kevin, a day like this gives people a lot of pause about big groups and, and security, but as we learn the details of what unfolded, I'm just curious, what could you possibly do? There's not much you could do. Well, it's a complicated situation. I mean, when you look at some of the elements here with the high rate of fire and uh, it being outdoors in a contained environment, um, it does complicate things. I mean, you're not gonna respond the way you would typically respond to an active shooter situation. Um, you do want to run. If you can evacuate the area, get out of there. Uh, but what we're seeing is you had that one primary exit. A lot of people were mm -hmm. funneling there. If you're not at the front of that group and you're going to be backed up and you're going to be in a pile, um, it would be better to find cover and find something that can possibly stop rounds, stop some of the shrapnel. Um, so that you can get some protection from that. Truth be told, you just hope to be lucky. I mm. mean, when you're talking about somebody this organized, somebody this detailed, this uh, person uh, armed to the teeth with automatic weapons, you just hope that you can get out of there. That's about it. Yeah, uh, yeah you're definitely going to hope that uh, luck and uh, God is on your side for this. But, you know, there's some, there's some things that you could do. Finding that cover, try to understand the situation that you're in a little bit better. And it's going to be hard to even understand where the shots are going to be coming from. I mean, there's mm. uh, the shots are going to be echoing off the surrounding buildings. Um, and you heard multiple people say they, they had no clue where these shots were coming from. They thought there were multiple shooters at one point mm. because of these echoes. But to be honest so with you. So you don't even know where to run. As we talk about trying to protect ourselves, and, and certainly you're in the business where mm -hmm. you're helping industries, you're helping companies try to decipher how to get their people out in these kinds of circumstances. It's a different set of circumstances yeah. for every one of these shootings. Every one of them are different. And this one's uh, very different as well. I mean, just based off the profile of the shooter and, like I said, the environment that uh, the patrons were in. Uh, so, you know, at this point, all you can do is take a step back, analyze the situation and see what could the, what could the venue have done better and mm. what could the patrons do well. And from what I saw from most of the videos and, and some of the stuff that I'm reading is, the patrons responded very well. I saw a lot of them taking cover. They were doing what we call bounding. They were moving tactically. They would wait till the shooter was reloading and mm. then they would move. Um, all great tactics and all mm. things that would definitely help you. Doesn't it make you shake your head to think that people have to think about such uh, things like when yeah. do I move, some, when someone's reloading? I mean, we're hearing messages about we're not going to live in fear, we're going to continue to do things in groups, we're going to do concerts and venues and, and big events, but we'd be naive to think that people aren't going to walk into some of these thinking differently and wanting to make a plan. So with that in mind, I know mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't want paranoia, but you do want to be aware what should people be looking at as they go into situations in crowds? Um, definitely identify any additional exits that are available to you. Unfortunately, there wasn't, um, there were no additional emergency exits. You had that one exit, hmm. but there are stories of people going over fences and I, I believe they actually tore down a fence hmm. to, to exit. You know, find a way out and that doesn't necessarily mean to follow the crowd because that's not you typically what you want to do but find a way out of that situation. Um, identify those exits or those possible exits before something happens. It doesn't take long to take a look at your surroundings and uh, see if there's gonna be an additional way. It's out. impossible not to feel like you are a victim. If somebody is hell bent mm -hmm. on destruction, there is very little that can be done is. to try to stop them. There is. The best way is to stay proactive, um, to maintain that situational awareness, um, understand your environment. Right. And if something feels wrong, it typically is. Right. Trust your gut in those kinds of instincts and maybe avoid those situations. Thanks for the time, Kevin. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.